today, a leak that we posted back in September that set fire alarms off in AMD HQ is coming true. And that's with the Threadripper Pro line and the SWRX8 platform. These Threadripper Pro processors include a couple of units. There's the 3995WX, there's the 3975WX, 3955WX, and 3945WX. And they don't have standalone prices, which is always a mark that something is targeted towards business as soon as you see a quote is required. Or in this case, they are being shipped only with OEM and SI systems, at least at the outset. Lenovo is the initial partner for this launch with expectations to ship the first systems in fall, sometime with no further specification. And later we'll likely see HP, Dell, and some of the boutique SIs joining in. So today we're gonna be going over the naming scheme, the chipset and platform or socket differences, pinout differences, and some of the CPU specifications. Before that, this video is brought to you by Gigabyte Aorus RTX 2080 Ti Extreme. The RTX 2080 Ti Extreme is built with a triple axial cooling solution and ready for anyone interested in intermediate GPU overclocking, although it's also up for gaming out of the box. The Gigabyte 2080 Ti can reach the higher performance range required to play games at frame rates at and beyond 144 FPS, coupled particularly well with games like Call of Duty Warzone, Rainbow Six Siege, and other competitive FPSs. Gigabyte's Extreme is built to be a looker for system builders going for extra visual flair. Learn more at the link in the description below. So first up, we need to recap everything here. Back in September of 2019, we had an exclusive leak at the time about the then new Threadripper parts that were coming out. The 3970X, 3960X obviously shipped. We reviewed those later. That was in around November of 2019. And so that aspect of the rumors we had received came true. But the other one fizzled. And we weren't sure if it was just another usual die-off of something on the roadmap internally. This happens at all of the companies. Stuff ends up on the roadmap. And just like we said back in September, it doesn't always make it. So we thought SWRX 8 would not make it. And that's what's come out today at this point with Threadripper Pro. It just took some time. So it was a very early leak. So the way this lines up is uh, tier X40 was first. That was the Threadripper line that's already out now. And then SWRX8 or WRX80 came second. In the time since, the and the Threadripper 3995WX CPU IHS was leaked. So we did see that in the last week or so. And now, obviously, the, the whole thing is actually coming out in a proper, fully announced fashion from AMD. So we should start with an explanation of the naming of AMD's new products. The platform and chipset take on the WRX designation rather than the TRX designation for non-pro Threadripper HEDT CPUs. SWRX8 is the socket, whereas WRX80 is the name of the chipset. The S stands for socket, the W stands for workstation, and the X stands for what it always does in product marketing, X. The numbers are straightforward. Four is a four channel platform and eight is an eight channel platform. As for the CPUs, the 3995WX is the pro variant of the 3990X, the 3975WX is the pro variant of the 3970X, and the 3955WX is the 3950X DT or desktop pro variation. These have the same core and thread counts as their non-pro versions, it's just some of the other stuff changes. The 3945WX seems like a pro variant of the 3900X at 12 cores, but supporting two terabytes of RAM and 128 PCIe lanes. It seems like AMD skipped the 3960X equivalent here, at least for now, and the Threadripper Pro line carries more of a focus on business requirements, like security features, more memory bandwidth on specific applications. AMD's documentation suggests that oil and gas simulation software is heavy on bandwidth, and reliability. So the Threadripper X line then is different from the WX line because it doesn't have that same pro level of support. It doesn't have the uh, extreme memory support that the WX line is targeting. And it's got a little bit of gaming edge to it, even though it's not meant to be a gaming part. That is kind of how it's panned out a bit, at least in some of the marketing we're looking at today. So the X line is an enthusiast focus. It's unlocked, it's overclockable. WX line is a business focus. It's not being sold separately in trays, and it's locked fully, as you might expect for these types of parts. As a comparison of the sort of weird product stack that AMD has found itself in, you could almost sort of think of it like what NVIDIA has done with its GPUs, where with the Titan line, you have something ignoring the original Titan. You have something that's not quite a pro-level card, but it's kind of going that direction. It's not full FP64. It lacks the driver certification that the Quadro or Tesla cards might have. If you're Boeing or someone like that, you would need that. You couldn't get away without it. And so it's lacking some of those key features. 
but it's still a powerhouse that's maybe targeted for smaller businesses, one-man shows, people who don't need to pay for certifications uh, or for some of the memory support or double precision, but do need the production potential of it. And that would be the equivalent in this scenario of Threader per X. Whereas Threader per WX, you could think of more of like a Quadro and maybe Epic, you start thinking of Tesla if you're gonna draw one-to-one -one against GPUs. But Epic's still out there, obviously. The other big difference between Epic and Threadripper is that Epic can go into multi-socket configurations, whereas Threadripper and Threadripper Pro can only be single-socket configurations. So that's a big distinction where if you need multi-socket, maybe for server real estate or space, then this isn't going to fix it for you. As for socket compatibility, the Threadripper Pro CPUs have a new pinout from Threadripper and Epic, and so they should theoretically not allow a system to boot if socketed into a TRX40 motherboard or into an Epic motherboard. And we've actually filmed an Epic system here back when Wendell brought one to show off. So this means that the Threadripper Pro CPUs will require new boards. The pinout changes are, as we understand it, mostly related to memory channels. So this might mean activating previously inactive pins or remapping some pins to enable those extra channels. The WRX80 chipset runs 128 PCIe 4.0 lanes, whereas TRX40 runs 88 PCIe 4.0 lanes. AMD's documentation most heavily marketed against two CPU configurations from Intel, from the Xeon Platinum line, and this isn't our area of things we review, so we don't really have the, the insight into performance or what you would even configure in this price class to really talk about if the marketing comparisons are valid. But one of the primary advantages of going with a single socket configuration if you have the power sufficient to do the workloads at which it is being targeted in that single socket is that you can stick with things like EATX, in big air quotes their case, so SSI, EEB, form factor components, and uh, parts that already exist on the market as opposed to custom building things if you're Lenovo or HP. Custom building some weird case that fits a, a two socket board where now you're not reusing tooling anymore, so now everything costs more, especially because the run volume will be lower than if you're building towards a wider set of motherboards and form factors and audiences. So that's one of the advantages, obviously disadvantages, well, it's one processor, and for some people that isn't going to work. So, uh, other things to consider, CPU specs. The spec sheet's pretty straightforward for the WX line, especially if you're already familiar with the non-W Threader for X CPU specs. It's just a modified version of them. The spec table lists the 3995WX as a 64-core 128-thread CPU, just like the 3990X, but it's locked and running at 2.7 gigahertz base and 4.2 boost. For reference, the 3990X is marketed at 2.9 gigahertz base and 4.3 gigahertz boost and is also unlocked. All these parts advertise a TDP of 280 watts, as uh, does the comparable Epic 7 h 12 and the Threader for 3990X, but that's because AMD's TDP numbers are calculated backwards and without consideration of power. In fact, we had a leak in September, again, of 2019, that showed us the SWRX8 and STRX4 TDP calculations. We'll put that up now. Because AMD's formula considers T ambient, TKs, TCTL, and thermal resistance, all these numbers are used to calculate TDP and not power. It's not anywhere in the equation, of, in fact. Now, as for the numbers in this chart, they are from that earlier leak, so they might have moved a little bit, but AMD can kind of tweak one or the other to equal the TDP that they want. Back to the AMD spec table for the Pro line, the biggest change has been to support two terabytes of memory across all of the CPU options, even the 45 and the 55. That's also including support for 128 PCIe lanes, UDIM, RDIM, and LRDIM memory. So that's where those cheaper 3950X alternatives come in. Uh, if you don't care about cores as much, but you want the memory and cheap PCIe lanes, that would be what AMD's targeting. We hesitate to put these types of marketing benchmark slides on the screen ever, because uh, normally we prefer to self-validate this stuff, but because we don't really cover these use cases, we'll just go ahead with what AMD has provided thus far. This is just for understanding the target market, and these marketing, as with any companies, should obviously be taken with consideration that it is, in fact, first-party information and is influenced. But what they're showing is that it indicates the heaviest gains for increasing the channeling to eight and the other changes here are in After Effects 
gas and power simulations, and even Unreal Engine performance, although we need to ask about how exactly that's tested. We won't be independently verifying this marketing data this time, but we can at least present the slide shared with media. As for the first system that's supposed to be available with Threadripper Pro, that's the Lenovo solution that's currently being discussed, and it's the uh, P620 workstation. The system has eight DIMM slots, and it can be configured with up to 64 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz ECC memory. That's a little less than the maximum two terabytes that the CPUs can support, but it's getting there. Details on individual components are thin for the time being, but the system can be configured with two to four quadros, up to four four terabyte three and a half inch drives, and up to two two terabyte M.2 drives each with the optional RAID configuration. Of these, as of now, presumably only the M.2 drives take advantage of PCIe Gen 4, although the specific drive model isn't yet listed, and what NVIDIA's got going on later in the year might change that too. Lenovo's renders show a modestly sized air cooler for the CPU, not much larger than the footprint of the socket itself, and because the CPUs are non-overclockable, there's not much consideration for going beyond whatever is uh, probably fine stock. Although the product page for this P620 is live, Lenovo hasn't yet committed to a date for availability beyond just fall, vaguely, and uh, pricing for the CPUs and motherboards is not separately presented, so we can't really go down that path. As for the other options, Asus and Gigabyte are working on motherboards. They might be sold separately at some point, although in order to get a CPU, you either have to buy a system or wait for it to pop up on AliExpress, which it'll definitely do at some point anyway. And for the OEMs and the SIs, SI system integrators don't normally do a custom motherboard, but the OEMs, Lenovo, HP, Dell often do, and these companies will typically work with the actual motherboard makers, ECS is one of them commonly used, a Gigabyte's another, and they'll have something designed and then strip the labeling from it, or maybe leave it on there, but it's less bold and in your face. So that's kind of the plan right now for Threader for Pro. That gets you up to speed on the basics of the specs, the target market, and what it's planning to do. Uh, this is not a processor we have any intent of, of benchmarking in any serious fashion because it's just not in our coverage spectrum. We'd have to start chasing Xeon Platinums at that point too, and that's a bit out of budget. So uh, that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net. If you wanna support our reporting directly, we just listed the PC component shirt there that you can buy, it's in stock now, uh, in TriBlend and Cotton, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Subscribe for more, we'll see you all next time.